everyone and welcome back to the final St. Madness video of 2022. We are taking a two week Christmas break after this video, which means that the next time I see you, it'll be a new year, 2023. Of course, we still have today's full video and it's a good one, I promise. We're actually gonna shake things up a little bit in today's episode and we're gonna skip the trivia entirely. And we're gonna go straight to the results. Now, unless you're new to the series, you know that this music means drama. It means suspense. In fact, I guarantee you one of my middle school students watching right now was like, oh, the dramatic music. Shout out to my middle school students. But indeed, this was a very close vote. So let's take a look at the numbers. Now, we've had slightly different numbers of people voting in this year's videos, but generally speaking, if you get 200 votes, you're in pretty good shape. And St. Gabriel the Archangel indeed got more than 200 votes. And St. Divna also got more than 200 votes. Let's get a little more specific. St. Gabriel the Archangel got 220 something votes. And St. Divna got 220 something votes as well. So for the final numbers, St. Gabriel the Archangel had a grand total of 225 votes. And St. Dymphna ended up with a grand total of 225 votes. We have a dead tie. For the first time ever in the history of St. Madness, we ended up with the exact same number of votes for these two saints. We had a really close call all the way back in the first year, Juan Diego winning by just two votes. And last year we had an epic dramatic series between St. Bruno and St. Kateri with the votes going back and forth before St. Bruno pulled away. But we have never had it just end in a completely dead tie. And according to the official St. Madness rulebook, there is no tiebreaker rule in effect. So here's what we're gonna do. I want you all to decide. If you've already voted, then you're good. You've already voted. But if there is anyone who was absent last week or missed school or didn't watch the video or wasn't able to vote, anyone out there who has not cast their vote for Gabriel or Dymphna, cast your vote. Help us break the tie. If you're a teacher and you don't count your votes when you send in your class's votes, send in a vote right now. For any of you who have voted, maybe over Christmas break since we have a two week break, tell your parents or your relatives at Christmas, shamelessly plug St. Madness, help us get more votes in so that the best saint can win. And if we take a look at the bracket here, of course this one is still to be determined as we stand at a dead tie. And unfortunately, we're going to have to wait two weeks to find out who the winner will be when we come back from Christmas break. So don't forget, find some people to help us break the tie, but we still have today's saints to vote on just like usual. So, let's meet... Today's Saints. Our saint showdown for today will be between Saint Mary Magdalene and Saint Gaul. We'll begin today with Saint Mary Magdalene. Welcome back. Today we're talking about Saint Mary Magdalene. And in the first round, we just got a very brief look at the saint. We learned before that she was a very poor woman in the time of Jesus who lived near the Sea of Galilee. Her life was honestly very sad, but after something miraculous happened, she lived a great, lovely, and joyful life. So we're actually going to invite St. Mary Magdalene in today to share her story. Oh no, I'm being possessed by several demons! Mary needed all the help she could get, and suddenly she heard a knock at the door. My name is Nicodemus. I am here to cure you from your seven demons. Nicodemus put his hand on her head and said, Demon! Demon! Leave her! Sadly, nothing happened. Mary was still in pain and Nicodemus was embarrassed and ashamed that he couldn't do anything. A few months went by and St. Mary Magdalene still had no luck. 
Several different priests came and tried to help her and heal her, but nothing would work. But one day, Jesus would come by and attempt to cure Mary Magdalene. Hello Mary, my name is Jesus. This time, Jesus put his hand on her forehead and she was instantly cured. Oh my gosh, it's a miracle! Bless you! Mary couldn't describe how she felt with words. She was just so happy and overjoyed. She continued to live her life, but this time decided to be consistent and holy. She prayed every night, thanking Jesus for his miraculous act. But then one day she ran into Jesus again. Jesus, the man who saved me! I would like you to join me and follow me and my disciples. So she did. Mary followed Jesus and she was actually one of his first disciples. This shows how much of a great saint Mary Magdalene truly was. There's still so much to be learned about her, so we hope to see you in the next round. Hello everyone, my name is Marker Plutt. Sorry, wrong script. Hey everyone, today we're talking about St. Gall, the patron saint of birds. Now I want to say that St. Gall is actually more known for being a saint in the Orthodox Church, not the Catholic Church. But anyway, St. Gall was born around the year 550 in Ireland. He attended the monastery in Bangor. He later became a disciple of St. Columban, and then later he became a hermit on the Steinach River. This happened after St. Columban was exiled from France. Later he helped found the Luxiel Monastery. In many stories, he's heard to have rebuked a bear from attacking his group while camping. Then the bear would later come back with firewood. Another story about him involves a woman named Fried Berga. He performed an exorcism on her and the demons came out in the form of corvids or birds. He was awarded a small plot of land by the king of France so that he could build a monastery there. He would later die in 650 AD in Arbon, Switzerland. A small church would later be built dedicated to St. Gall on the Steinach River. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you will vote for St. Gall again.